I think most of you are familiar with Alfa Romeo. It is a brand that was born 1910 in uh, Milan, Italy, arguably one of the fashion capitals of the world. I think only fitting for a brand that puts a tremendous amount of emphasis on uh, design and uh, style. And really, when, when you think about many of the great Alfa Romeos over the past 105 years, they all pretty much had three things in common. These are the great ones. State-of-the-art technology, incredible performance, and kind of that gorgeous Italian design and style that uh, true Alfistis and fans of Alfa have kind of become accustomed to. But it's also a brand that has uh, really an incredibly rich history throughout that 105 years. And you know, one of the notable parts about the Alfa Romeo history began back in 1923 at a race called the, the Targo Florio. It's a open road endurance race held in the uh, mountains of Sicily. And, and back in 1923, the Alfa Romeo race team at the time, it, it was really stacked with a number of legendary uh, Alfa Romeo drivers, Antonio Ascari, Giulio Mazzetti, Enzo Ferrari, and a fairly interesting cat named uh, Ugo Savacci. And what was interesting about Ugo was, was kind of two things. One, the guy was incredibly superstitious. And the other is he was kind of a perennial second place finisher. You know, never able to really get on the podium, more often than not kind of uh, finishing behind one of his fellow Alfa Romeo drivers. So what Ugo did going into the, decided to do going into the 1923 Targa Florio race is paint a four leaf clover on the side of his car for good luck. Uh, sure enough, the first race out, that 1923 Targa Florio, Ugo won, brought home the trophy, and he thought, hey, this is fantastic from this day forward, four leaf clovers all around on my race cars. Well, as some of his bad luck would have it, a couple months after that Targa Florio victory, he was at the Monza racetrack, the current home of the Italian Grand, Grand Prix, and he was testing a prototype race car. It didn't have the clover on it, no time to put the clover on, you know, whips it around, first corner out, he crashes and he loses his life. You know, so mm. some hard luck on, on Ugo, but really from that day forward, the four-leaf clover became a symbol of all of the Alpha race cars. Uh, also, it was a symbol, and you see it at the back of the beautiful 8C, as well as uh, here on the, uh, the Giulia Quadrifolio, or four-leaf clover uh, quadrifolio in, in Italian as a performance indicator for the streetcars, and also in memory of Ugo, with, with one slight difference. Uh, on Ugo's car in 1923, the clover was encased in a square box, and all future clovers come in a triangle with the missing point symbolizing the loss of Ugo. So when you think about the clover, yes, it's part of the Alfa Romeo racing heritage, certainly a performance indicator, a memory of, of Ugo, and a symbol of good luck. So you'll see here we have our Alpha Giulia, uh, the TI, no clover. This is the 280 horsepower version. And here on the Quadrifolio, the one that you whipped around the track, we have the four leaf clover, 505 horsepower Ferrari derived engine, top speed 191 miles per hour, zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Bringing things uh, a little bit more into the present day, really the, the return of Alfa Romeo to North America was marked by the Alfa Romeo 4C Coupe and uh, the 4C Spider. And this is a vehicle that was inspired by another uh, legendary Alfa Romeo car, the 1967-68 Tipo 33 Stradale. And really the lines of the 4C are quite similar to that of the, uh, of the 68 uh, Stradale. A very unique uh, setup, almost a supercar setup on this car. Carbon fiber chassis, aluminum subframes, and mitigen placement. And you're kind of hard pressed to find those three attributes in a car for a vehicle costing less than a, than a million dollars. 237 horsepower, zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. And again, very consistent with the DNA of Alfa Romeo. Then uh, here in North America, getting things a, a little bit closer to home, uh, dedicated engineers uh, for Alfa Romeo in uh, Italy. Uh, many are shared with uh, Maserati. Alfa Romeo is now headquartered in, uh, in Modena. Maserati headquartered in Modena as well. 
uh, Fabio is there, and uh, the test drivers are all in the uh, Modena area as well. Uh, dedicated Alfa Romeo brand team, complete separation from that of our mass market uh, operations at uh, Fiat Chrysler, uh, establishing the distribution network. Again, we have 2,400 Chrysler Dodge and Jeep Ram dealers. We are not putting Alfa and have no plans to put Alfa into any of those uh, dealerships. It will be completely separate. Uh, we have 154 dealers that I'll get to right now, combined with both our Maserati distribution network in some cases in the U.S., and our Fiat uh, distribution network, which is completely separate infrastructure from that of Chrysler Dodge, uh, Jeep, and Ram. Uh, unique training programs, uh, I was just talking to Stephanie, critically important that the customer experience associated with Alfa Romeo is top-notch and a, and a unique customer experience as well from that of our mass, ma mass market operations, dedicated marketing team, uh, website, social channels, and of course, you've probably seen us at some of the auto shows completely separate from that of our C uh, CJDR infrastructure as well with Alfa Romeo. More often than not, we're kind of back to back with uh, uh, Maserati. Revealed to Julia at the Los Angeles Auto Show uh, last uh, November. Uh, all going well, this car start to arrive in dealerships in December, and uh, this car early in <coughs> Q1 of 2017. We'll be back at the LA Auto Show November 16th this year where we'll reveal another all-new Alfa Romeo, our midsize uh, SUV. I think we're the first uh, press conference up and I uh, look forward to seeing many of you this year as well in LA. So far with Alfa Romeo, over 760,000 followers on Facebook as awareness mm -hmm. for the brand and the brand's return to North America is starting to build 16 million hits on YouTube with respect to the various videos that we have posted up there, 800,000 uh, hits to our quarterly website, and we have over 100,000 uh, hand raisers that have expressed interest uh, primarily in, uh, in the Julia. When we look at the distribution network that I just touched on, you know, example of our store down in St. Petersburg, uh, this one is dueled with, uh, with Maserati. And when you think about Alpha and Maserati from a product uh, portfolio standpoint, they complement one another quite nicely. Midsize car for Alpha, midsize SUV for Alpha, the 4C Coupe and 4C Spider, and then on the Maserati product portfolio, full-size SUV, a couple of full-size cars, and then the GT and GC, which are really two plus two uh, touring coupes. 171 Alfa Romeo uh, dealerships throughout NAFTA, primarily Canada, as well as uh, the U.S., and we anticipate that growing up to about 250 by, uh, by this time next year. <coughs> when you look at the uh, segment that we're going after, notwithstanding the car segments are, are under quite a bit of pressure as people are gravitating both in the mass market side as well as the premium side to SUVs for the most part. The premium midsize sedan market in the U.S. is still the largest premium segment in the country representing almost 23% of all uh, registrations in the U.S. And then the second largest segment in the U.S. is the midsize SUV segment. So all going well in about six to seven months, Alfa Romeo will be back in 43% of the premium space in the United States market, excluding that of the 4C Coupe and 4C Spider that are historically a little bit uh, boutique.